Cummins Real Estate Group show. No, it's not the Cummins Real Estate Group. It's the Cummins Real Estate show. Okay, two times is okay, but the third time you'll be out. I'm, <laughs> Michelle, I'm going to need help with this. It's going to take me a while. Got to say it a few times in a row. I'm, uh, it's say the, it over and over like a mantra. The, it's the Cummins Real Estate show starring Michelle Cummins and me, Curtis Pope. Say it a few times, over and over. Uh, over and over? Okay, I'll work on that. Okay. <laughs> you have to go and change the name just as I got used to it. Like I three know. years in, hey. I was good to go. Element of surprise. I tell you. Life is about change. Well, here we are. It's the post-St. Paddy's Day show. I hope you're feeling okay this morning. Still wearing green. Yes, yeah, so am I. I didn't take it off. No, I just, well, I just, this is warm. And well, you got like an army, I don't know. Kind of an army green, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're you trying to get away with it. You can't pinch me. It's green. Well, and it's after St. Patrick's Day. It, it, but well, you didn't <laughs> see me yesterday, though, so it's okay. <laughs> well, I know you. Um, I saw on Facebook that you have Irish blood in you. So I, I guess do. It was a quarter a, Irish. There you go. It's a big day for you. I have Scottish in me, so I don't. Really, I shouldn't be taking part the in enemy. St. Patty's Day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone! Even Scottish deserve luck. Even the Scottish. I like that. <laughs> I wow. <laughs> All right. Richard has it, too. Now that Something about you, too. Now that we've offended <laughs> part of our listener base, <laughs> uh, we'll carry on. So, so here we are. We're back with the show. We figured out the name that I screwed up, um, but we're back, and we're good to go, and it's another week. Uh, did you watch the the famous annual movie that you should everyone should watch on St. Patrick's Day called... Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Darby O'Gill and the Little People, which stars a very, very young Sean Connery. Yes. Yes, when he had hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the last few times I've watched it, I have to say I have fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but the Little People, oh my gosh, it's so fun. <laughs> but again, kind of funny that you've got a Scotsman in an Irish movie. <laughs> again, see? Yeah. Something to do with it. Friends, forever. Yeah, James Bond. You know? James Bond. James Bond. Yeah. That's so no. good. Um, and, yeah, no, you didn't watch it. Actually, honestly, I didn't either. <laughs> I was no, going I to. but I haven't seen that movie in years. But I do know I've, I've seen it. Definitely have. My brother sent me a clip of somebody on TikTok that looked like uh, the little guy, the yeah. little Irish guy. It was so funny. Because <laughs> we used to watch. We had it on VHS oh, growing wow. up in the 80s. Yeah, we had it on VHS. Yeah, I just... I, you know, I I'd just rather sit and watch like you know the, the whole Taken series with Liam Neeson. Yeah, why he's not? Irish. You know, I mean, talking his... about uh, shows. Do you know True Lies? Uh, I well, I know the movie. I know there's a TV series. I have not seen it yet. It is so good. Okay, when I was in Vegas at the MGM, they always have the TV, like CBS or whatever it yeah. is. It's the TV. You you test the the uh, the shows um, before they're usually out or when they're just coming out. But anyways, I always test the shows. I always go there when I'm in Vegas. It's always so much fun. But I always am very critical about my oh I didn't like this actor because this or this for that or the writing because of this. There's always stuff I say. But this one. They kept on highlighting, change your cursor, because I just had it up, like, 100%. I like it the whole time. I'm like, I don't want to change it. I like it. I like, hmm. I liked everything about it and everything, like, every actor, every, the story writing, the cinematography, the directing, everything. But it's, it's so weird good. to have uh, Van from Reba as Harry Tasker now. I have a hard time seeing this guy who was a dumb football player on Reba's TV show. I, oh, I didn't know that. That's Now he's a super spy? That's neat. I That's mean, him? Yeah. Oh, cool. So I'm, you know, I, I got to get past that, but uh, I do. I, I, it's one of my favorite Arnie movies, so I'll have to give the show a try. Yeah, I was watching Picard uh, the other day, Thursday with Richard, and I saw the a clip, like a little advertising of it, and he's like skipping forward to the commercials because we recorded, and I go go back to that, and it was it was the show I tested in Vegas. I'm mm. like, it's already out. Didn't even know. I guess yeah, I'll have to give good. it a chance. You should. You really should. I, I told him, I said, Richard, you got to record every show for me. <laughs> um, so I'm really um, nervous but excited about my 5K run. I'm going to attempt to run. Weren't you going to start training like a month ago? I was supposed to. And I only started the other day. <laughs> I've only had like two days in. This is my third day. <laughs> well, you know, I got 20, two weeks. At 29, your body gets back into the muscle memory real quick. You'll be fine. Two weeks, Curtis. That's all I have to train for this. I oh. got to help raise money for the Mission Hospice Society. I almost want to grab my bike and just kind of ride beside you just for the you know, the comedic value <laughs> of putting two weeks of training in for Come a on. 5K no, run. You should do it with me. I, I played <laughs> softball last weekend for the first time in forever and almost killed me. You want me to, like, 
And that was just a practice. Oh, my gosh. Managed to roll my ankle a little bit because, well, the field was not in the great, greatest shape, of course, and I managed to find a pothole. But still, <laughs> like, you want me to run? Well, I have to say, I have better stamina, like, endurance than I do strength. So hopefully I'll be okay and won't kill myself, but... <laughs> well, good luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. April 2nd, can Sunday. You, can, you, can you live stream it so we can see how you're doing? I really should. <laughs> oh, would I look like a geek if I wore my GoPro on my forehead? Like a like a spelunking ha- well, like helmet? Like- my first reaction is, that's what's going to make you look like a geek? But no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think when you're running, all bets are off. You just do what you got to do. I don't think anybody's judging you when you're running. Do it. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Heritage to Hatsik. Here I come. Exactly. Ah. Okay, so the Bank of uh, Canada, as we know, they're holding their rates. And what's really neat, what I've just heard from Alex Cote, you know him, a mortgage broker in Abbotsford here, he was saying that, yeah, it, for probably the first three quarters of this year, they're going to probably hold their rate. And uh, it, inflation looks like it's still slowing down and it's still going to be good. I think they're uh, estimating 3% by the end of the year, possibly. So 1% higher than the goal to, of 2%. But it's at least better than it was, and hopefully that uh, sustains and keeps our mortgage rates from going up any further. But he th- says maybe the first three quarters it won't be uh, moved, so that's good. Uh, but what about the banks in the U.S.? Isn't that really scary what's happening down well, there? Well, I mean, the government's uh, you know bailing them out to a point, I guess, but it is scary that the banks are, are faulting down there and everything else. And that, you know, I mean, we, we've had that happen before where they've had problems there, and I, me- I remember the big crash in real estate down south there, what, about, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago, mm-hmm. um, which he was just in Vegas. I remember it hit Vegas really hard where homes that were half million dollars, $600,000 homes were now worth 125000 and stuff like that for a while. It's like, Ugh. Yeah, and you know what? The, the U.S. lending system for mortgages was so different then, and then they had that uh, big fallout, uh, black hole, and then they, they fixed and repaired a lot of their approval and how they did their uh, mortgage process, looking at Canada as the shining star, because uh, we are really good and tight with our lending, and then we got even tighter after that as well. So my next question about, you know, how, how what do you think of that but what about like this the bank the banks are going bankrupt literally but uh down there but w- is there going to be a butterfly effect do you think in canada well that's always the question because often what happens in the u.s a, a, in some regard will affect what we have going on up here mm-hmm. now how is it going to affect that that well you're the expert I, i'm supposed to be asking you these questions <laughs> I think, again, we are so strong. Our lending rules and regulations here in Canada, they're so tight. They're so good. Literally, I, that word, why? I said it twice now. I don't like that word. But anyways, I have this app on my phone. It's a word of the day app. And I keep on looking at a new word every day, but I have to start using them because just looking at them are are no good. Literally, you have an app to tell you different words. Don't use the word literally. (laughs) You're going to make me say it. So, no. But, yeah. So, I don't think we're going to have any butterfly effect. Uh, I think we're pretty good here. So, hopefully, hopefully, I have that crystal ball and I'm right. Uh, But we'll see. Time will tell. And it's the spring market. We are March. We're end of March now. We might as well call it end of March. We've already sprung forward, and uh, the market has sprung forward, too. I've had a couple multiple offers on some of my listings. It has been busy, and I've got lots of pending offers and lots happening. So and that's really good. last month, we saw the uptick in, in prices, too. So things look to be rebounding. Yes, and last week we had our stats show, our monthly stats show. So if you didn't get to see it or hear it, uh, go on to our YouTube or our podcast and have a look at that show from last week. But, yeah, all of it's there on my website, on my blog as well, um, all the stats. But, yeah, uh, so I wanted to say yesterday for St. Patrick's Day, I had this saying, my quote yesterday, and our quote later today is something you challenged me on last week. So you are going to get your Elvis quote later. Perfect. Just so you know, Curtis. Uh, but yesterday it was trying to buy or sell a house without a realtor is like trying to find a four-leaf clover. Luckily, I'm here to help. And it's true. So call me if you're I, looking to sell or buy. I like that. I, I think some of the most effective TV commercials I've seen in a long time was those realtor commercials. They were running the last three or four years, you know, where you didn't use a realtor. Ooh, you know, and they've got like the heavy metal festival behind them or, yeah. or whatever else going on. And just like, I always love the reactions. And, and it's just so true, right? Like, 
The, Remax has a lot of great real estate commercials. They're funny. They've got comedy, which is nice. Well, they've got that new one where the where the dad's dad's explaining, you know, the house inspection. He's looking at the house <laughs> yeah, talks yeah. to his son. He's knocking on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to the wall. Yeah. Uh, if these walls can talk. That's right. That's a good one. You know, don't we don't dad explain. You know, we have realtors that are experts. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> you, if you want to get you don't you don't go to a guy that fixes your tires if you're uh, hurt your shoulder. Exactly. You go to a doctor. You go to somebody who's been trained and is a professional and it has countless hours of experience. Experience. And the the ten thousand hours, 10, as they hours. call it. Absolutely. So, talking about listings at, or buying, I'm going to mention some of my listings right now before go for it. we go on break, and then afterwards, when we come back, you know what we're going to talk about? You don't, Curtis, because I have this no is idea. a surprise every week. <laughs> you've even changed the order around, which really is throwing yeah, me. You've changed I the name. It. You've changed the order. How many times do I have to tell you? Life is about change. It's only a matter of time and she changes the co-host. Grab it and hold on to it. No, (laughs) there's some things that shouldn't change. And that's one of them. Okay, so when we come back from the break, we're actually going to be talking about G, what's that, GPS, that GP? GPT. Thank you, GPT. There's only three letters in that word. So we're going to be talking about how it affects the real estate market. And that is going to be interesting. Okay, so the first one, exclusive listing. What's an exclusive listing, you ask? If you didn't ask continue listening anyways <laughs> so an exclusive listing is one that is not advertised on the mls it's not advertised sometimes it is... called a pocket listing i believe Ooh, yes you called it uh that is a pocket listing absolutely it means a realtor who has that exclusive listing has the exclusive rights to sell it but not market it and advertise it so it's a little different why would somebody want an exclusive listing you ask well one, maybe they don't want their family to know they're selling. <laughs> maybe there's some, you know, personal reasons they don't want it out there for the world to see. Or they could be uh, more of a um, a celebrity or somebody who, again, wants privacy. Uh, there's many reasons why somebody would want an exclusive listing. Testing they, the market even. Maybe not 100% sure they want to sell, but maybe if the prices are high enough, maybe it is time to move. Things like that, I guess, it would come into play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And maybe the end user, the end buyer, is somebody who wouldn't want it advertised either or marketed because privacy. So maybe that type of property is good for that. But this exclusive listing I have is actually Maple Ridge. It's 16 acres. It's off 264th, and it backs onto 116th. It has two road accesses. It's divided in half by Kanaka Creek, and it is a really cool creek. It's for sale for $1.8 million, and the sellers are willing to do a vendor take-back mortgage. So that's a seller take-back mortgage. They're willing to do it of up to $1 million of the property at 8.9%. This is a great opportunity to get into the acreage, housing, and property market without having to get approved for a mortgage if you have a good down payment. So it's something to look at because if you're getting a vendor take back mortgage lots of investors that's the way they do it because it's you could only lend so much from the banks the banks will only lend you so many properties and then you have to start doing vendor take back mortgages to leverage your investments so anyways that's a great opportunity so call me if you're interested in that exclusive listing there's a house on it there's a garden workshop on it there is a cabin cottage let's call it on it great airbnb uh space as well attached to the house so there's lots of opportunities in this property okay so then i've got a new one in yarrow and uh i'll talk to you about that one though when we can come back from the break okay we can do that so if people want to see the listings you have and maybe you want to find your stats things like that where can they go michellecummins.ca we're back with more right after this